Okay, here's my third video of my Seaberg library unit. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm doing a modification to make this thing play 33 RPM records. Um, when I first got this, when I was searching for parts for this thing, um, I had searched on eBay for parts amongst other places and one of the things that eBay kept doing, of course, you know, they kind of track what you do, they, uh, you know, this thing kept popping up on the, uh, under my recommendeds when I was looking for other stuff uh, that looked like a power amp. And finally, after, uh, after a while, I, after this thing kept popping up, I actually looked to see what the thing was and said it was an automatic uh, speed unit. And I thought, well, wonder what that is. Because by the looks of this thing, I thought this thing was a power amp. Uh, every time I kept seeing it pop up on the screen, uh, I thought it was a power amp until after I read the, uh, the information on it. And I thought, an automatic speed unit, and I wasn't too sure what this thing did. So I did some research on it to find out what this thing did. And what it'll do is it'll make this thing here play 33 RPM records. So I thought, well, here, I don't know what it's going to take to make this thing work with this. I don't know if this thing was already set up to do such a thing or not. So I ordered a um, service manual for this thing, and when I got it in, of course, I made several copies of it and put the original away so that there I can take the copies and I can just, you know, do all my scribbling and all that kind of stuff on it. And I found out that uh, I needed to just do some modifications to make this thing work along with this. Now, in this turntable, there's a, uh, I noticed when I first was messing with this thing, trying to get this thing fixed up, that in the middle of this turntable here, you got this little pin right here. And that's so that way there it'll play small uh, whole records. Then, of course, you got the bigger part of this hub here, which uh, that's for your, uh, your big records, or the big whole records. Well, anyway, uh, when I noticed that, this thing was not lined up correctly for it to clamp a small hole record. Because I have several uh, small hole um, 45s. And I wanted this thing to also have the capability of doing the small hole 45s. Now, down inside this clamp arm switch, or this clamp arm, I don't know if I can get it in the video. Let's see. There's a little switch right down here that's a two pole switch, single pole, or sing single pole, two double throw switch and the center post is hooked to ground and then the other sides of it uh, each side is then um, hooked to your 24 volts what this thing's supposed to do is if this thing either happened to not clamp down or went in too far it would ground it would make a ground connection to activate the uh, the trip solenoid to make this thing go back to me into eject mode well, to get it to play the small hole 45s, I had to disable this one side over here. So that way there it wouldn't uh, keep going into eject mode every time it clamped a small hole record. Well, it so happens this thing here requires that side to make it play 33 RPM records. The only thing is, is there had to be a modification done to this, uh, what's called the cam switch. I needed also another con contact on here for the 24 volts to activate this... Uh, power relay over here that makes this thing change between 33 and 45 RPM. So what I did is I ordered a cam switch and these pieces come apart. You know, this thing will come apart in pieces. So I ordered one of these and added it to the top of this so that way there I could get this thing to do the 33 RPM records. Um, I thought I was going to have to get longer screws because they come out down here in, in the bottom but it just turned out that these things were long enough that if I fill underneath her, there's just a little bit still sticking out. So luckily I didn't have to go to the hardware to get longer screws in order to add the switch in. So what this does, it's hooked in series with this uh, power switch. And so the power then comes through. I had, add, I had, to, I had to add a wire to the plug that's in this here, and that's what this red wire is. It's flexible, uh, it's a stranded wire. I had to add that in and bring that up through, hook it to this switch, and then this yellow wire then goes down and I had to fish it through to get it inside here. And then it hooks to the other side of this uh, switch here. So now, 
if this thing clamps down on a small hole record and this thing goes up, you know, when this thing's in the up position, this thing here will make contact or make connection, which will make this, which will activate this thing here. Now what this thing will do is it converts your power from 120 volts AC 60 cycles and it'll change it to 44 volt, uh, it'll change it to 44 hertz 90 volts. So anyway once I got this, the information on how this thing was supposed to work I went I saw this you know this thing since it kept popping up on eBay I went ahead and ordered it. Now the tubes I wasn't concerned about it takes two 6L6s two 12BH7s a uh, 0A2 and a 5U4. Now all those I've already got so I wasn't concerned about that. This here is a socket for a 3 watt light bulb which came with it and um, I went ahead and ordered a couple more just in case I needed them. So anyway right now I'm in the process of getting this thing working. I already had and tested this part here out, the switch part and when I got this thing here to, you know, when I clamped it and all that stuff, that seemed to work. All that part worked. So now I'm in the process. I just need to go through and rebuild this thing here. I did power this up. I did put some tubes in here. They did light. So the power transformer, all that's fine. So now I just need to go through and start redoing this thing. Okay, I thought I'd just kind of do a quick non-working demo. I've got this thing hooked into the library unit right now. Uh, I've got a 33 and a 45 stuck in here. Uh, I put this one tube in here, if I turn my headlight off, you can see it, just to show, show that this thing here does have power to it. Um, what I'll do, oh, what I'm going to have to do here is I'm going to have to do some modification because this cord that comes with this, it's got a male and female plug. What you do is you unplug your playing unit and plug it into the female plug and then you take the male plug and plug it into where this thing here went. Uh, now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do a modification to this because with it sticking straight out right now this thing is going to hit it because there's not any clearance for that. So I've got a cap, the cap that went to this thing here because I put this in that was for my uh, switches that I showed in an earlier video. I've got the top to this, the cap and so I'm going to take that cap, cut a hole through the side of it, so that way there, this thing here angles down like the original plug over here does, like the original plug did, so that way there, this thing here won't run into it. So at any rate, um, just as a quick demo, right here is a 45, this is a 33. Now since I don't have this thing, I haven't done, done anything with this thing yet, what's going to happen is it'll play the 45, but when it gets to the 33, it'll pull this power relay in right here. It'll pull that in, but it won't do anything because the fact that nothing here is going on yet. I don't have the uh, 90 volts, 44 hertz coming out of it. So just as a quick demo, we'll turn it on. And it'll play a 45. This time. This time. Now what you'll see then, I'll go ahead and eject this thing and uh, have it uh, come over here to the next record and it will shut down and it'll activate this relay up here. As you can see it stops. We heard the relay up here engage because it's switched it over to the power supply. It's hooked to this transformer right now but since there's nothing going on here that's why it shuts back off. So anyway I'll go ahead and re-eject it. Um, can't have it go all the way down. I'll push the switch over. Hear the relay switch when it hits. See it just reactivated again. So anyway, 
we'll turn it back on again. So anyway, that's how far we've gotten so far. Now the one thing I meant to mention earlier is in the bottom of this thing there's a hole right down underneath here. Now, my plan is when I get this thing up here finished up, what I want to do is I'm going to, since I made this table for this thing, uh, you know that I can roll it around on and stuff. What my plan is is to take and cut a hole in the top of the table right underneath this hole here. Take this thing and I'm going to put it up underneath the bottom of the table up underneath here and then run the cord through that hole down there then up through so it'll plug in up in here. And uh, since this thing here is going to be upside down of course, the heat's going to be going the wrong way, so I'm just going to mount a little fan up underneath there. So, um, probably to one side, one side or the other or whatever. So it'll blow air past it while it's underneath the table to keep it cool, since the heat will be going the wrong direction. <laughs> 